never happens to people like them. 2.2 million on the jackpot. Steve's always getting on it for wasting money down the bingo, but then he's dropping bin lids on the football pools and lotto. Worst of all, it took him four days to realise he'd even won. A packet of fags on Plessy Road and a copy of The Sun. Asking on the off chance as foolish hope flickered, and then he drowned in disbelief as the kids behind him bickered. Ticket stuffed in wallet, he walked out like Prince Nazim. And what better way to celebrate than cheering on your team? A tenor at the turnstile and the clubhouse with a smirk. Thomas Cook on Monday instead of toiling away at work. The rounds are his and soon the fizz is being passed about. With news like this a Chinese whisper soon becomes a shout. By five o'clock he feels as though he's on his second pill. A 30 yard screamer as the Spartans win 1-0. Maria finds him face down in the bog. He's thrown up on his polo shirt, he's a drunken blithering log. She struggles to find a taxi that'll give them both a lift. And then she hears about his fortune and the evening takes a shift. She verifies the ticket on his phone. And then her throat fills with vomit and she needs to be alone so she runs on down to Broadway. Smokes outside the laundrette. The sun begins to vanish as her shadow casts a silhouette. 2.2 million. Think of the prison that could buy. All needs catered for. No excuse to fly. So... She fiddles for a lighter, and she takes the ticket out. Her cheek allows a grimace as her mind wrestles with doubt. She's terrified of being alone, but things can't say the same. Part numb and part defiant, she sets the thing aflame. It curls up on the pavement. Did she free or did she thieve? She turns her back on Broadway. It's finally time to leave. Good evening everybody, my name is Matt Abbott, welcome to this week's Insta Session, this is number 34, so I've run these Insta Sessions since the beginning of May last year, something to keep us going during the lockdown, uh, get an insight into some wonderful artists and how their practice has been affected, and also give people a chance to promote the books that have been published, because obviously we can't do uh, normal book launches, um, so it's a great way for them to share poems and talk about their new collection. Uh, and our guest tonight falls into that category. Uh, Sophie Sparham is a fantastic poet and writer from Derby. She's been commissioned by a range of uh, fantastic organisations and her new collection, uh, The Man Who Ate 50,000 Weetabix, is being published by Verve Poetry Press next month. So I'm going to invite Sophie to join... Da -da 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 -da. I love Sophie's stuff. She's an absolutely fantastic performer. I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does tonight. Hey, up. Hey, up. You all right? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad. You know, just uh, another day in, in yeah, the home yeah. office. <laughs> nice and colourful, as always. Trying my best. Was going for uh, Fresh Prince of Be Bel Air vibes tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> So, um, the book's out, like, next month. I nearly said in April, but I've realised that's actually now next month. How are you feeling about it? Uh, nervous as to how <laughs> it will be received, but also just excited now and, and kind of ready to, to get it out. Like, I feel like my writing has developed a, a lot <laughs> since I released my first collection. So I'm just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to put some new work into the world, I think. How long have you been working on this one? Um, probably since late, well, I want to say late 2019. Um, no. So I was really lucky because I got um, a writing mentorship with Writing East Midlands and I asked for Helen Mort to mentor oh, me. So she, um, she was on maternity in 2019, but then towards the end of it, she you know, started coming off maternity and that. And um, and we started doing some sessions together and just working with her was just dead helpful, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it really made a difference. Yeah, she's awesome, isn't she, Helen? Such an incredible writer. Yeah, and, and really encouraging as well. Like, I really liked her work. I really admired her work. So when I asked if she would mentor um, through the scheme and she said yes, I was like, oh, so excited. <laughs> Nice, nice. So, like, um, if you were to... This might seem like a weird question, but I've literally just thought of it now. Uh, if you were to read this collection at the point that you released your first one, what do you think you'd think of it? If I if I was to... Re oh, I don't... You know what? I think I probably would get it, but I, I probably wouldn't get it to the level 
but I'm yeah. at now. I've read a lot more poetry since I wrote my first collection, and I'm in a different headspace. Like when I wrote my first collection, I was just like wanted to be crass and tear the world down, and I still feel like that. But I feel like I'm coming from a less anarchic, unstable place. I'm like I, I want to write about things that I want to write about joy and joy in everyday <laughs> things, um, yeah. as opposed to. I want to burn the world down, black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally get you. Oh, that's cool. I'm always interested, like, because like, much as I shouldn't do this, I always equate it to, like, a band releasing albums and sort of looking at where you're at with each one. So I was just curious to see what you'd think. What was the first one called? Mind the Gap, is that right? Yeah, yeah, please mind the gap, yeah. Please yeah. mind the gap, please, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just yeah. curious to think of you at which stage you're at. But, yeah, no, that's exciting. Um what, when's it yeah. out in April? Is it like towards the end of a month or? Yeah, it's the 21st. So we've still got some time for just getting the final edits in. I mean, the majority of it's done and, and good to go. And lovely Helen's done the forward as well, bless her. So yeah. that's really nice. Um, so, nice. yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it, I think. Cool. Yeah, well, I'm excited to see it. Um, do you fancy sharing a poem? Yeah, sure. Cool. So... Apologies if you're going to get like lens glare from my glasses. <laughs> All right. But um, yeah, so this is called uh, Joy Riding with Dennis Skinner. <laughs> Everyone must spend some time being bad. After 49 years, God knows you've earned it. Choose the car you've always wanted to steal and let me smash the window. Outside the pubs, Men grind together as regular as teeth in the jaws of one who is always hungry. We ride past figures who spray their lovers against walls like graffiti, tag the city with names they want the night to know, past those that vomit their truths into drain pipes, mouths as open as goalposts shooting for home. This isn't what I wanted to show you, but understand we grow differently down here in the cracks, are always waiting to be weeded out or burnt by daylight, leave our legacies on newspaper headlines, a far more interesting dead. I've learnt to pray by pressing my foot down on the accelerator and holding my breath. I know I should spend a lifetime repenting for my sins, flog myself daily, to make up for the people I have borderlined with tyre marks. But you, my sweet, there's nothing left for you to do. I can't see anything changing St Peter's mind. If you, a passenger of sin, were to lean back, put your feet on the dashboard, close your eyes and whisper, dear God, I'm coming. Nice. Beautiful, what a way to start. And that title as well, Joy Riding with Dennis Skinner, quality. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I just thought, like, if there's anyone I'd like to go joyriding with, or if there's anyone that, like, kind of deserves some time off just to be, like, just to break the law or just do what they want, like, it, it would be Dennis Skinner <laughs> for me. Totally. We had so, a couple of nice comments there. Somebody really loved the jaw metaphor and some nice comments while she was reading, so... Great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was nervous because it's my first Instagram live. I've never done one before. So I was like, oh, but it, it's quite nice. I'm enjoying it. Hey, it's all right. I guess it's a bit weird for you just reading to me, but I, I try my best to make them chilled and it is always nice to see people commenting and sending love arts and stuff. So, yeah. Ah. Well, so thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm so I'm trying to think of the last time I saw you. I mean, probably at Verve Poetry Festival. Yeah, it was a while ago now. Like, remember, yeah. we used to go out to real, like, events. <laughs> What's that club called in Derby? The Hairy Dog? Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's <laughs> the Hairy Dog in Derby, which where I used to work for a number of years. <laughs> man, I miss that place. Oh, um, man, me too. I bet you don't. Oh, you do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what? It's like it, it's it's one of them places where just like just everything happens, and there's lots of um, 
you know, lots of wonderful characters and it's all part of the experience. And, it's, you know, I've always had a good night at the Airy Dog, so yeah. Yeah, I miss Derby. Yeah, yeah, very salt of the earth people in Derby. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, cool, yeah. Do you uh, fancy sharing another one? Yeah, sure. Um, so, the next one I'm going to share um, is based on my friend, Sam Savage, and I wrote it for him. And basically, he once told me that he thought the best song in the world was Come On Eileen. So, <laughs> just said it for a fact. So this is called The Best Song in the World. <laughs> the best song in the world is Come On Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners. It's true. You told me in a backstreet London pub, the only karaoke session where your mouth caught fire and you threw your scent across the stage. Every dance movement, self-immolation. Every attitude note, a protest, a deed of living. You who sped up and slowed down songs just to see if you liked them better. You, who sung in different voices, depending on mood. I still see you, mic in hand, screaming the lyrics over and over. Every time I stare at a blank page in my notebook, wait outside an office door, press send. As if you're telling me that tonight, the stage is mine. As if you're screaming, come on, Eileen. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Love that. Yes. Oh, brilliant poem. And to be fair, it is a banging song. Like <laughs> It is a pure banger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Respect to him. I just, anyone that has got like, proper passion for something, I just love it. I just think, oh man, I just love to see it. So, yeah. so when, he, when he said that, I was like, right, that's a poem. <laughs> yeah, totally. But even you saying about the speeding up and slowing down and like singing in different voices, depending on the mood, and, and just, I don't know, the Backstreet Pub in London, the carriage, so many images, and I just felt like I was there in a booth, like listening to, yeah, no, brilliant. Love that. <laughs> yeah, he, he told me um, that he does actually slow and slow down and speed up songs dependent just to see it, it, that's not even that's that's a true thing but he <laughs> but basically he went on this um stag night and, and sam's not like a typical stag kind of guy and he just said that he got the whole pub singing come on eileen because he just sang it so passionately <laughs> yeah and yeah. I, imagine, I i think there's a real um joy and art to karaoke i think it's a brilliant thing <laughs> yeah it totally is like it gets like, it gets lost sometimes but it really and that, that it's not a song it's a movement like you know yeah. when you're at a party and it does that bit where it slows down and everyone gets in a circle and it's honestly man it's just yeah I'm getting <laughs> sorry I'm getting carried away now um, no it's fine it's good <laughs> um, so tell us about the title of the, the collection is that a is that a poem in there is that a theme is that a it, it is a poem, um, but basically, so the title, which is, uh, yeah, very odd, um, The Man Who Ate 50,000 Weetabix. So my uh, dad, who is a man of few words, is a, is a Derbyshire man who, who doesn't say a lot, just randomly turned around to me and said, Sophie, you know, I reckon I've eaten 50,000 Weetabix in my life. <laughs> just out of the blue. He's a, he's a retired accountant, so he worked on the side. And um, and I thought, wow, how ordinary and magical <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so it's like for me, like I just wanted to write about really, um, I suppose a lot of things that people would consider mundane, but to me they're really magical and odd and weird and beautiful. And um, I wanted to write, just explore Derbyshire, explore my dad a bit. Um, explore masculinity, uh, masculinity a bit, and yeah. just write about you know just everyday, everyday stuff. But that was that poem. Um, that took me the longest to write. <laughs> that that yeah. was the last one. Yeah. Because um, I just didn't, I just didn't know what to. Um, well, I wanted to write something about my dad, uh, but I didn't want it to be sentimental. I wanted. But I did, but I didn't, I didn't quite know where it yeah. was. So I 
finished it a few weeks ago after two years of trying. I love it. It's such a great title. And like you say, it suggests something around masculinity, but it's also the mundane and the... But that's what poetry is, isn't it? It's finding the magic in the mundane. And it's, yeah, it, I just, it's fascinating. What I want to know is, does he have his wheat bix just with milk? Are we a bit of fruit, a bit of sugar? What, mix it up a bit? He's it, a simple creature. He just has it with milk. He doesn't do that whole bloody baked bean thing that's going wrong. Oh, <laughs> mate. I love wheat bix and beans, but that's just wrong, man. I don't know. It, it, it broke the internet last week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's no, that's fascinating, and yeah, it just and already it's answered like some of the themes in the collection, so I'm really, really interested to to read it. Yeah, oh, I, hopefully it'll it will uh, it'll be all right. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, great. Do you fancy sharing another poem? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll share that poem actually. <laughs> I'll share it. I think that. I didn't want to put you under pressure, but yeah. Oh no, it's fine. I got all my documents loaded up for these things. Uh, someone's just said anything other than milk on Weetabix is just wrong. <laughs> Fair play. You know, I, just, I know some people would have milk, but then they'd put like blueberries and raspberries on it or, you know, which is fair oh, enough. But... Okay. That's okay. But I'll yeah. Be myself, you know, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I'm on it, I'm on it. Um, the man who ate 50,000 Weetabix sounds like a children's story instead of a fragment of you. A ritual repeated at dawn, where three cardboard dormice are sandwiched into a white bowl and eaten over seven decades. My favorite ceremony, in which you wear suits, jeans, trackies, drink strong tea from a chip blue mug and read the paper, eye up the floors of the world. You tell me to behave. I tell you, we have no control over how we are remembered, nor what parts of us remain. Your name is always surrounded by office chairs and red ties, bar stools and bench presses, areas you do not permit me to tread. And that's fine. I keep my parts of you in the rusted tool drawer, the silver St. Christopher pendant hanging in the bathroom, the pieces of chalk wrapped in blue cloth. I don't care for achievements the world expects. As long as the car has an engine and a place to go, I will climb inside. So when someone says, your father, your father, your father, as though reading out the latest stocks and shares, I will reply, yes. But have you heard how his jaw clicks? <laughs> Bloody hell, that was fantastic. Oh my God, what a poem. Wow, <laughs> love that. Thank you. So, I realise it's probably a bit awkward receiving one-on-one -on -one feedback like this. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Just I, fantastic. I, I just have to say, I'm very aware a house is being done up at the moment. There's a massive pipe just sticking out behind my head. <laughs> I just I had to talk about it, so it's like it, it, so it's out of the way now. <laughs> Fair enough. I didn't notice. I, I thought it was like a little shelf or something, but I mean, look, I've just got got nothing. So yeah. better than London Pipe. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, what a poem. God, that's 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 just beautiful. Um, so many lines I could pick out of it, but yeah, as long as a car's got an engine and somewhere to go or climate, yeah, just, yeah. I just was thinking, like, about how when we remember someone, we all remember, like, different parts of them. So yeah. my memory or what I think about when I think of my dad or whatever is going to be different to when someone, like a work colleague, their relationship with my dad. And I just find that really... Yeah. interesting the fragments that we see of people and what we make of that and i just that's what i was thinking of i guess when when i was writing that but yeah it took ages <laughs> and then one day it just happened and i was like oh thank god <laughs> it's difficult to know when to walk away from a poem sometimes isn't it it's difficult to know when it's done like yeah i think a lot of um poetry goes off uh, a lot of writing happens in the mind doesn't it and it's just thinking like for me um 
my like when I write a lot of it is just me trying to work out things and just trying to work out the world so I spend a lot of time just thinking about a poem it could be like months <laughs> before yeah, anything yeah, yeah. like I know I want to write it but I don't know where it's yeah, you gotta let it bounce around a bit yeah totally yeah 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 oh Maria saying there makes me miss my dad yeah 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 it's such a beautiful poem um yeah like um I guess sometimes with with your friend who said that about Common Island sometimes a poem just lands in your lap and you just go zoom but then other poems like that one about your dad, it's so complex and there's so many layers to it. Yeah, it's curious like I, how many poems just land and then, yeah, it's a strange thing that we do in it. But uh... <laughs> It is so odd because you've got to be like so vulnerable, but so just completely prepared to lay it all out there and be like really confident about it. But then be really, it's just such a weird space to inhabit. But it's great, you know. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Here we are, here we are, indeed. Oh, great. Well, it's 10 to, so if you've got any that you definitely want to share, now's the time. But if not, I'm happy to just chat. It's what, whatever you want to do. Um, I've got I've got some more uh, bits and bobs. I've got a oh. poem. Um, <laughs> it's called Sunrise Over Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I'll read that because I like I just I needed some hope in the in these like, these past few days. And we got there's an Aldi down the down the road from my house, and I was just like running past it, and the sun was just coming out. And I thought, oh, that's bloody nice. That is. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> um. So <laughs> this is uh this is sunrise over Aldi. It won't always be like this. Somewhere, boys will put down their postcodes and weep into tracksuits, step over double yellow lines and loiter with one another. On the south side of the city, a mother will embrace her daughter for the first time, try on her new name and find that it fits her lips. Caroline, she will say, Caroline, Caroline, you look beautiful. It won't always be like this. Somewhere, a 70-year-old bird watcher will buy a motorbike and find that he too can fly. A black woman will show a mixed-race girl how to tie a head wrap and something in her heart will leap. Somewhere, someone will utter the words, I love you, I miss you, I'm sorry. An atheist will speak Allah and smile at the taste of honey on his tongue. The dead will climb out of their graves and shake those standing in line at the bank. Somewhere, you will look down at the stars shooting across the dual carriageway and decide to climb off the iron railings. In the shadow of the service station, you will wait for dawn. God, that was incredible. <laughs> wow, got a bit teary then. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's great. That was just beautiful. What a poem. Just, I love that. About the the black woman teaching the the mixed race girl with the head and the little leap of a heart and like the taste of honey. Oh wow, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Is that a new one then, or is that in the collection, or is that? And that it's going to go in the collection, um, but it's a lot of it is based on things that I've seen during lockdown. So yeah, yeah. So my my friend um, Olivia was showing how to tie a head wrap wrap around her beautiful afro hair, and I witnessed that, and it was just so lovely to to see her finally being able to like like her going oh I know how to do this now and my next door neighbor's in his 70s and when he was like 70 he bought a motorbike after years of not riding <laughs> and uh, I've got a motorbike and he's got a bike and like loads of like like of the old lads on our streets who've got bikes and it's just so nice <laughs> like it's so lovely to um to to see all that and I just think um there's so much like hope in everything you know for me like you know I struggle like anyone else but there's just there's if you look for it that it's everywhere you know so I just wanted to write something in the middle of all this just to be like oh we need we need summer <laughs> you know? yeah yeah well I mean all the comments all echoing the same like just blown away by that 
yeah, beautiful. Oh, thank, thanks, guys. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm I know, I know. <laughs> I know it's awkward, isn't it? Taking compliments, but you should know. You should know. And like, I'd say the comments and all that were all just really glowing and stuff. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. Out of lockdown, there will be some silver linings and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And there's there's silver linings everywhere. You know, you you walk around now and you can see the seasons changing. You can see the daffodils coming out, and you know. It's like little things, isn't it? I know. I, I'm sat here with my big flowery top on and my dreadlocks. So I'm <laughs> saying all my hippie words. <laughs> I think oh, it's true. true. <laughs> but it's true. It's that, like, you know, it, it's it's nice. And just, I love finding, like, don't get me wrong, I love the countryside so much. Um, but I love finding little glimmers of hope in, like, urban areas. And I think the collect the collection's quite urban. So Yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, well, when we spend all of this time doom scrolling and the the news is also sensationalised and doomy, it's important to remind ourselves, really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks for that. That's, got a bit, that's why I got a bit teary. Well, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. It, it's 5-2. If you want to read another one, you're more than welcome to. But if not, I'm not going to hold you to it. It's entirely up to you. I, I do have one. Hold up, I just need to... My computer needs to load. Right, so <laughs> my mate, uh, he bought a saxophone at a service station during COVID. And, like, they had to do, like, a little exchange, right? <laughs> so they had to, like, the guy had to put the saxophone down and he had to back off and then the other guy had to get the saxophone. And uh, <laughs> so I, I wrote a poem about it. <laughs> oh, you would? Um, because I just thought it was so great. <laughs> It made me so happy. I was like, oh, that's so poetical. I need to write that. Um, so I called it uh, Sax at Watford Gap. <laughs> I love uh, Watford Gap. What services? Sorry, go on. No, no, it's <laughs> Watford Gap sick. <laughs> right. There's always been something intimate about service stations. Strangers pissing side by side piling together waste as though building a monument to the straight concrete roads which enable life to slip past the landscape. In an era where speed is a destination, X doesn't normally mark the spot by a building that fills and empties like the tide. Yet here we are, cars parked side by side, stood between rows of bumpers close enough to kiss. He crosses the white line and lowers the case to the concrete before retreating to the safety of his wing mirror. And I, all fingers and thumbs, lift it to my chest as if newborn and crack open the shell. Inside, a small bronze body reflects the streetlights, swan-necked, keys waiting to be touched. He knows that I have longed for you, Scaled the corners of my darkness, where slowness is a scripture held between my teeth. The three of us walk the embankment, stare at the McDonald's sign, a landmark amongst the ghouls. Two strangers and you, a bucket chain of sand, passed from generation to generation, between the empty Coke cans and the old newspaper headlines. Headlights stream off your body. As he drives into the night, joining the Tarmac's constellations. I shall never see him again, but together we held a gap between us, as fresh and as sensitive as the wound a milk tooth leaves when it detaches itself from the gum. It gives me comfort to think hundreds have sat here, some as unsure as me, feet dangling from the edge of this hour hand, thinking back to a time where they didn't have to sprint to the next season. They say jazz is all about the silence between the notes. Brilliant. Nice one. That's, yeah, fantastic. I'm so glad you shared that. Wow. Well, um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing your poems with us and for giving up your time. Um, loads of wonderful comments on here. So everyone else has loved it, and you can see the little love arts popping up now. Uh, oh, so the collection... Oh yeah the collection's 21st of april yeah 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 and um 
the lovely Charlotte Lund is releasing her collection in May. And so we're going to do a joint launch um, on May the 28th. So it's be a little bit later cool. than, but you know, they say, you know, you can arrive late. That's the style, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, too right. Too right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you yeah. pre-order it with Verve, you get free P&P on UK postage if you buy it direct from Verve. Thank you, Matt. Can't argue with that, can you? <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to do a... Charlotte's dead sound. She's proper lovely. She's a dead nice person, and she's a yeah. brilliant poet. So I'm dead excited to do that with her. It'll be a lovely night. And, um, yeah, she's really... She's a cool writer. That's that's my uh, biography of Charlotte. So <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Oh, well, I look forward to it. Nice one. Yeah, it'll be fun. Cool. But... Thanks for having us, though. It's been, it's been good. I've loved it. Oh, good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Well, hopefully I'll see you soon in yeah. real life. That'd be really nice to see you, Maria. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully gigs and things will, will be back. But, yeah, we'll, we'll cross our fingers and, and wait. Yeah, I reckon so. Cool. All right, mate. Well, take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Middock. See you later. Bye, I, don't uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> it's usually, there used to be a cross. It's all changed now. There used to be a cross. Oh, well, I've never mind. It. I've got it. I'm, I'm going. Oh, well. I saw it. <laughs> uh, so that was Sophie Sparham. Uh, please pre order her collection, The Manning Rate 50,000 Wheat Abix, through Verve Poetry Press. It's out on the 21st of April. Um, and join us next week. Uh, I'm not hosting next week. Louise Pazakali is hosting. And our guest poet is also from Derby. Pure coincidence. Uh, Jamie Frazivulu. So, yeah, join us next week. Same time, same place, same top quality poetry. My name is Matt Abbott. My name is Fugs. See you later. <laughs>